Harrow. Jonathan, hello. Good evening, Nick. Yes, sir. I would like to apologise because I haven't called you for a few weeks. No, that's fine by me. Don't you worry about that. You can not call me for a couple of weeks as many times as you like. Because I've been trying to leave the country and I'm getting... I, don't, I wanted to tough on three things, actually, three mm -hmm. points. Yeah, you've been trying to leave the country. You've been driving in a straight line and you still haven't found the coast yet. No, listen to me, because um, I've been travelling across like the that. country... <laughs> I've been traveling across the country. Um, there's problems with my visas and things, and um, I've, I've traveled widely over the past 10 years, and now, to be honest with you, the minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. When you say that you've got problems with your visas and thingies, what do you mean by thingies? Disgusting. Nothing that we don't want to uh, hear about, I hope. Well, no, it's nothing dozzy, actually. Oh, um, right. Carry on. But I... I oh, genuinely, uh, actually, last uh, last night, the night before, I'm mm -hmm. getting such, uh, the, you know, it, it oppresses this country's economy now. The whole country has fallen apart. Yes. Um, and I met uh, the uh, friend of mine who is the friend of uh, quite a well-known Pakistani political family. Mm -hmm. And I was in London and I had a sirloin steak. And because I'm, my, I told you, I got rid of a cleaner and uh, it's my f finances are teetering and you yeah. know one sirloin steak and ship is 32 pound 50 in london yeah well never mind about that think about how the cow feels and the one gin and tonic is 15 pound 15 pound for a gin and tonic booze where was that it was in the london actually in the london um, right well that explains it because i i voted the brexit and mm -hmm. i don't want to be racist but but no, the Eastern European workers are all, they're all quite polite and hardworking because this morning I was at the mother's flat, not at my house, I was at mother's flat. Mother's flat. And, and I had an Englishman, um, he come to do the electric and very surly attitude and he actually oh, got very angry because he actually kicked mother Sipper. Hang on a minute, he kicked your mother's what? Uh, he, he, he did the, he was like, no, no, I did all of this. Charge me, and then uh, when he was leaving, a uh, leaving, he kicked Mother Sipper. He kicked your mother's S L I P P E R slipper. Yeah, he kicked so, your mother's slipper. Was your mother still wearing it? No, it was in the hallway. In the hallway, right? I, I think he might have been a racist, but I looked at him. <sighs> you know, give give him a strong look. Mm -hmm. One of your patented um, stares. Yes. Uh, because all of the Eastern European, the hard workers, the good workers, they've all yeah. left. Well, that's and because we yelled at them to get out of our country for five years straight, after which they did. After voting Brexit, I voted for the Brexit party. Yeah. And how's that working out for you? I, I don't regret nothing. You d <laughs> Wait a minute. You don't regret nothing, so you do no. regret it. No, listen to me, because this country I'm now, listening to you. Everything is, it is, oh my God, it is so, I, I can't swear. So can I say the C word, C R A? No, 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 no. Okay. It is so terrible. It is rubbish. Right. Well, it's because of people like you, Jonathan, who refuse no, to apologise. Where, where's this apology no, no. that I've heard so much about? No, because I wanted to quickly touch on an issue of role models and the Farage very quickly. Role models and Nigel Farage. Well, okay, this will be interesting. I can't imagine the two fit well in the same thought, but go ahead. Because like this surly English, I woke up at 7 a.m. this morning for this electric yeah. Well, so, I woke up this morning. Yeah. You know, you know and um, I think the kiddies, they need good royal models. I mean, he wasn't a kiddie. He's a oh, nasty piece of work. Um, <laughs> the kiddies need... No, it's true. I was very angry. Um, um, they need good royal models, like the, you know, the ginger boy who plays the guitar, the Ed Sheeran. Um, yeah, Prince Harry, yeah. No, and then also there is, and even if you're not a football follower, mm -hmm. you you will. What was um, that? Did even you, if you're not. Hang a on, no, but before you said that, there was a noise. What was that? You just went. It was an indigestion. Oh, indigestion. Right, you were making a um, right. There was like a, a a personal expellation of air. Disgusting. Really. Because because our. After my international financial matters, I'm now having to do the budget shopping and I got the chronic <laughs> diarrhea because you asked me. <laughs> Please don't tell me which shop you bought your food at. I'm begging you not to do that. But on the royal model issue, um, mm -hmm. 
For example, there is a, even if you're not a football fan, the, uh, there's a young, um, very, very handsome black man who plays football for the right. Manchester United. You, you that, forgot to Mike, say, before you introduced this handsome black man, that you're not gay, but... The, uh, Michael Radcliffe. Michael Radcliffe. Yeah, you know, he's the, he did the... James O'Brien talk about him. He did the um, free school meal thing. No, Ma I, Marcus Radcliffe. <laughs> Oh, Michael. Oh, that Michael Radcliffe. Yeah. <laughs> Ma Martha Radcliffe. Martha Radcliffe, right. Mm -hmm. You know, you need people like this because I, I just, you know, for the first time, I was in Croydon uh, two nights ago. All of the Eastern European hard workers have left. So I actually just in the middle of the, in the evening, I was sweating after the solo and sick. I feel such tension and anxiety. I started zogging on the street. You started watching on the street? I was doing a run. Oh, you were running. Right. I thought you said something because, else. Because the Croydon, no, I'm not a racist. But, yeah, but <laughs> get, no, get out of there it, as soon as possible if I were you. No, because immigration, if you, you say people like me, we want to pull the drawbridge up. But in immigration, if there is too many people from too many corners of the world, it is like a continuous stream of noise just hitting <laughs> your head. Do you have any idea what that feels like? Yes, Jonathan, I do. I've just been speaking to you for the last 10 minutes. But it's uh, been a delight. That was almost too perfect a setup. Is he a real person or um, uh, am I hallucinating? Or both? Could be both. That was almost too good a setup. This stream of noise hitting your head. Do you have any idea what that's like? <laughs> I mean, how can I resist that? Uh, Sutton. Hello, Will. Hi, I'm absolutely wetting myself laughing tonight. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant, Nick. I am very but sorry I'm, about that uh, that whole oh, um, that moist uh, incident. Uh, well, I, I've got to tell you about something very, very funny. Um, I, I'll try not to take too much of your time, but well, you, have, um, you haven't you haven't got too much of my time. One minute is what <laughs> you've got. I, I, I'm a sixty-year-old man. Sixty uh, look, years old. Yes. I, I look, I look like Wayne Lineker. Um, I've got a, I've got a goatee beard, and I went to the cinema, having come back from Cyprus yeah. to see my sister mm -hmm. for a two-week holiday. Yes, and I went into the cinema tonight at seven fifteen to see uh, the film you've been mentioning tonight, both Bar Barbie and uh, Mission Impossible. I was going to see Mission Impossible, of course, and I and I was tanned head to foot. And I and I and I was wearing pink, so what? I walked. It. I yeah, <laughs> literally, I look good in pink because I'm tanned. You see, I'm still yeah. in holiday mode. Right. So you can imagine, I've got in. I've I booked my tickets online. I've literally picked up a packet of Revels. I'm going to have a hot dog, <laughs> like one of the big ones, mm -hmm. with a load of sauce on it. Yeah, because no, no doubt uh, you're very I, very I, hungry and you can't stop eating for two yeah, hours exactly. during a blooming yeah, film. Yeah. But the, the point is that I had my hands full with everything and uh, I was in the auditorium and I was looking around and I'm thinking, everybody's in pink, <laughs> you know. And I, I'm looking around and I'm waiting for someone to say something. Yeah. And this guy said to me, you're going to see Barbie, are you? And I went, no, I'm going to see Mission Impossible. I've just come back off holiday. I'm still in holiday mode. Yeah. And I felt, I felt such... I felt like I could. the ground could have swallowed me up. It was right. so funny. And how was the film? The film was actually good. And, and the point where you said he jumped off the bike. Yeah. And well, he jumped he, off a cliff parachuted. on a bike. Yeah. I, 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 look, I looked at the footage on that, on the film. Yeah. And it looks like it wasn't... Um... Well, we'll never know. Sadly, because we're out of time. Manchester. Hello, Julia. Hello. Julia. Hi, Nick. Julia. Right, uh, I've got three things to say to you. One about cars, mm -hmm. but you're not as old as me. Do you remember the uh, Jensen, was it Interceptor? The Jensen Interceptor. I was so excited as a child to see one of those go by on the uh, motorway. Was, but not as a child, I was a teenager. Right. They looked so good. They looked fan blooming to, uh, like the back window was quite large, yeah. but in um, in the hole it was a fabulous looking piece of kit. Yep, yeah, it sure was. The other thing, 
before the Conservatives came in, mm. dentistry was on the NHS. Yeah. You did not have a problem getting a dentist, did you? No. And Bridget- then all of a sudden, uh, you can't get a, a NHS dentist. But At anywhere all. Anywhere you see smiles or yeah. he's whitening or mm-hmm. this, that and the other. Yeah. And you cannot go... You can't get an NHS dentist. It's People take impossible. Their own teeth out. Yeah, they're taking their own teeth out in this country, and this country has always been known for the excellence in their dental work. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to tell you: in March, I had something wrong with me, so I went to. I won't say the name of the hospital. Mm-hmm. Uh, the A and E. Yeah. And you know, at the back of the A and E, if you, if they think it's something serious, they put you in. I think it's an assessment unit. Yes. And then they said to her, I had to have a scan. Right. They wheeled me through, and the next thing, I was in a corridor where the ceilings was down, and all the plaster was off the walls, <laughs> and it felt like you was outside. Right. To go to the scan unit, it was absolutely terrible. But there was a good thing came out of it. Uh, on the scan, I had a big mass on my ovary. I, I was seven oh. feet at the time. They had to transfer me to another hospital mm-hmm. in the centre of Manchester, where I had to have a full bloody hysterectomy, and this tumour weighed... Oh, no, we don't want to know. We... Kilos. Oh, blimey. It was 16 times 10 times 14. I've got no idea what that means. I haven't Please had don't, them all please don't tell me. Right. Okay. Well, how's how's uh, everything with you now, Julia? Oh, uh, and they found out they, they were telling me I'd have to go to Christie's Hospital, the cancer hospital in Manchester. But how are you doing now, Julia? No, it was benign. I can't believe it. Uh, yeah, I can't believe this call so far. Uh, a little bit too much information, but I'm delighted to know that you are doing well. <laughs> well thanks, Julia. Thanks for the detail, Lewisham. Hello, Chris. Oh, Chris. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yes, hello. sir. Hello? Yes. Yes. One more time. Hello? Yeah. Your time is running out. Yes. Hello? Say something other than hello within the next two seconds. What? Time's up. <laughs> well, you know, I can only stand so much. Wellington. Hello, John. Oh, hello, Nick. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, well, it's nice to talk to you, as always. Is it? It is. <laughs> and I, I believe that you're a legend on, on the radio. Why aren't you on television? Oh, no thanks. OK. I mean, I, I, could, know, I could be earning ten times as much or more, um, but uh, no. I mean, well, I could earn ten times or more being a hedge fund trader, but I wouldn't be any good at that either. OK. Do you find um, you have a problem with autograph hunters? No, never. Not once. Really? (laughs) Really, yeah. Is that why you wouldn't ever mostly want to go on television? Um, I just don't know anything that I would want to do on television. People that go on TV, unless they have a specific thing that they want to do or that they're good at, they're just um, presenters which means you, you, they're, they're like puppets. You just take them out of one slot and you put them in another slot and you put the auto cue in front of them and then they, they, if they can read it while smiling and it doesn't look as though their eyes are moving back and forth, then they're hired. <laughs> it, it doesn't seem like anything to me. I mean, why are those people there other than to be on television? It seems like they would need, to me, I, I would need more. I would, I would want to do a specific thing on TV, not just be a presenter. But you could do a really good uh, programme about Kew Gardens, I reckon. Well, I don't know anything about plants. I like looking at them, but I don't know anything about them. I think you'd want an expert. Oh, no, that's right. We've, we've had our fill of experts, haven't we? Yeah, that's right. We want okay. some, some numpty pointing at uh, roses and uh, saying, that's pretty. I could do that. Well, that leads me to my next question. Yes. Can you get me a job on radio? Absolutely, but thanks for asking. Uh, let's have a call in Maidenhead. Hello, Gary. Oh, evening, Jimmy. Gary. Um, I've got three points, if you you bear with me. The uh, the first one is, is, is the um, inner ULEDs being extended because the original one 
it's got are there any vehicles to charge so it's not bringing in the money uh, so, uh, no, I, I haven't read that. I think it's being extended so that uh, more people yeah, might benefit from clean air. Yeah, but eventually, even the extended one, it will run out of cars to charge. Right. So then, so then what are the cameras going to pick up? So when eventually all the cars are off the road, mm. the cameras go over the charge and you buy the mile. Because it will eventually run out of cars to charge. Well, you could say the same for uh, petrol. Once we are all r driving electric cars, as is well, the as is the intention, then the the tax that they the, the government gets on petrol and diesel won't be there anymore. So they'll have to find some other way of taxing us, uh, Gary. But that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. But the second point is, um, you could you could do away with you, Les, and make the clean air by retrofit. Retrofitting your vehicle for £62.50. How'd you do that? Well, I was talking to an AA guy yesterday, um, and he says, uh, that the trouble is with that ULEZ is, there's an easier way to doing it. And he showed me, and he actually fits some of them. All it is, is uh, it, it's two manufacturers. One's in America and one's over here, but the one in America is the best one. It's a tailpipe. You 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 bolt this filter onto the back of the tailpipe, mm. and it actually eliminates the CO two and the soot coming out. And you change the filter every three months. And he showed me it, and and, I, and he showed me a little video. I couldn't believe it because even the modern vehicles, even a brand new vehicle, it may clean the air up, but it's still in the, you know still. But, um, Polluting, yeah. CO2. Mm. But this filter costs, costs less than 70 quid. And if you was to make that compulsory for every vehicle on the road in this country, then you would... Ha you happy would days. Yeah, well, that sounds... Um, it, I've never heard of that before, but it sounds extraordinary. What's your third if, point? If you, if you Google um, at some point... Um, CO2 tailpipe filter, you'll see what I mean. Okay, but you had three points, yes? Yeah, well, <laughs> like I said, the, the, the third point is is that it does seem a little bit ironic. I know, like, you know, cars are probably the main thing, but because I'm over at Maidenhead, I saw a boat the other day, and the amount of... Hmm smoke coming out the back and it, I just thought, well, surely all the boats that go up and down the Thames in the middle of London, the Houses of Parliament, they must be chucking out a load of fumes, but they don't get they don't get charged. Uh, that is a very good point. I'm, I'm not sure that there's uh, very much traffic on the Thames. In fact, in fact, I think it's a uh, uh, least uh, used thoroughfare. It's this giant wide stripe that goes through the middle of London and all you ever see on it is uh, a couple of barges taking rubbish down the river and um, some tourist boats. It's very underused. But you are quite right to point out that, um, that um, water-based transport is really something that is um, uh, one of the major pollutants on Earth. Yeah. Let's have uh, Bromley. Joe. Hello, mate. Joe. Hello, mate. Joe. Hello, mate. <laughs> now, uh, you, you got me on a swear there because you did mention Donald Trump. Now, how could anybody on the planet trust a man who's got who lies about his hair, his skin colour. Yeah. He, he just lies about absolutely everything. You the, should not the, believe, the you should not press. believe Donald Trump about anything. Believe me, believe me, believe me, believe me, believe me, believe me, believe me. Okay. Don't believe him. But the very fact is, so many do, that there is now this cult of Donald Trump. I mean... God give me strength. Yeah. What kind of world are we living in? We are We've living in a world of bing bongs. Bing bong. They're everywhere. We we have the choice between Donald Trump, who could potentially be in jail, and still be president of the United States. I mean, please, just <laughs> please. Can can people not even comprehend that? What is wrong with everything? Yeah. Right now, now we've also got this situation over here 
The reason I did ring up was that I spoke to a researcher about you, Les. You in it. Well, now, now ste look, see, see, steady on, see, Joe. From now on, from now on, well, excuse my language, but from now on, we're going to charge you £12.50 a day mm -hmm. for the privilege of getting in your car yes. and going to the supermarket. Only some people, Joe. Well, of course. But a very, very is, few number of people, percentage-wise. Something like, um, I don't know, there's uh, there's various uh, suggestions. It's uh, 5% or 10%, may, maybe even 20%. But it's a small number of people who are creating all of the pollution. Have, have you actually been on that website, the TFL website? Yes, I as have. To how you can get, uh, as to how you can get yes. dispensation. Yes. Uh, it, it is. It is a liturgy. It is the most monstrous. Thing. It is a ripoff. It is designed purely and simply to make money. Well, it's where not do you? There. Yes, but Joe, where do you think the money goes? Well, of course, it will. It, it will be squandered like all the money that ever goes into the government coffers. Well, it it's, will be squandered. it's not going to the government, fortunately. It's going to the mayor, who will spend it on public transport. It is ring fenced uh, for that purpose. Uh, can I ask you the question? Do you really think the government let's say take a slice of that? Um, Do you really think that? Do I really think the government is going to take a slice of it? Well, if of they could, if they could, they would. They'd they'd um, they'd burst into um, uh, Sadiq Khan's office and fill their pockets with that cash, if they could. But as far as I'm aware, the money that is uh, made from the ULES charge goes directly to funding public transport for London. Which, let's face it, London has some of the best public transport of any city in the world. I, I know that people in London might uh, balk at the very idea, but try going around another city in the way that we have uh, in uh, London. I mean, the buses and the trams and the overground and the tube. I mean, the, just the tube itself is, um, is an engineering marvel. And the extent of it is, uh, is virtually unmatched on the planet. OK, it's very expensive, but uh, that would be a way to um, make it less expensive, surely, to uh, spend the money on the public transport. It, it should be less expensive. It's less expensive in other cities, in other countries, better run countries. But, uh, you know, the, the mayor of London has only the funds to do so much. But do you know, have you been on the Moscow Underground? <laughs> no, I have not. Well, I have, and I have to say, it is stupendous. Yes, I've seen pictures of it. It, but it is it, stupendous. It, it doesn't I mean, have you know, doesn't have the extent of the London Underground, and correct. it was and it was uh, it was built under particular circumstances that we don't want to um, may, to, may, the, may, the, the, the we don't want to recreate in this country. Surely, may, may, may we go back to the ULES though, because this is a fundamental thing. This is this is strikingly. Fantastic for this country. The, the wow, implications, term, right? I do believe it to be the case. You know as well as I do that the ULES charge is a precursor to pound per mile. No, I don't know we anything. All... I don't know anything of the sort. But I'd be surprised if we didn't eventually have that because uh, with people adopting battery cars, then the tax that we pay in petrol and diesel will diminish, and but the government boy, will have to boy, replace it with something. Dear boy, this, this is the stupidity and the absolute, the harm of it all is that it's going to cost every single person. Mm. This country will be overrun by this kind of nonsense. It's already been going that way for a long time. Joe, it's tax. It's called tax. You can call it nonsense with some justification in this country because it's what the government does with that tax that's the thing. You know, people are, dis, uh, are dissatisfied in this country, but in places like Norway and Sweden, they are much less so. In fact, they're happier. They're actually pleased with the way that their government is using their tax money. It's because it is for the benefit of the people. We, in this country, are dissatisfied because it appears as though the government takes our tax money and gives it to their friends. And that only became um, uh, it sort of indisputably apparent during the COVID crisis, when um, the, the covers were thrown off 
because of this sort of mad scramble to get as much of our money as they possibly could, whereas normally it would be uh, much more subtly done. We only became aware of it because of the COVID uh, crisis. But, uh, you know, the, um, the, the crooked way in which this country is run predated that. It's just that we weren't as aware of it, that's all. But it's just tax, Joe. You can't avoid it. Um, so uh, pay it with a cheery smile. That's my, my recommendation to you. H-A-P-P-Y-N-E-S. Give it a go. <laughs> Windsor, Remy. Oh, Remy. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello, hello. Remy. Yep. Yep, hello. Hi, Am. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I just want to say that uh, London, U.S. is like, for myself, it's like a um, bit of scrap. Because I do understand, because the, 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 there was a question on the, on the end of the last hour that why, uh, why Londoners should breathe pollutant air because someone wants to drive to London, yeah? And I think it's basically big city has some of advantages and also it has some disadvantages, yeah? And these things which you mentioned before uh, um, um, around the, why some people have to suffer because someone else wants to um, uh, get some privileges, yeah? yeah? Actually, in this case of ULES, we do exactly the same because Banning the vehicles with the, with the below Euro 6, it's uh, transferring everything into the electric, yeah? But electric vehicles, obviously, they, 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 they don't generate any CO2, but we have, to get, we have to get that energy from somewhere else. And that actually makes somewhere else yeah. uh, pollutant air. That's so, right produce that energy Correct. to make London um, better, yeah? So, you know... But it's not the same amount of pollution, and it's not in a built-up area. That's the point. Yeah. The ULES yeah, charge is to make London's famously filthy air more breathable and less damaging to your health. Uh, and and to, to say, well, we, we shouldn't do that because to make an electric car causes pollution somewhere else is, um, well, th that means we should never do anything unless the result is absolutely perfect, which would mean complete stasis on every issue because uh, perfect doesn't exist. Yeah, I, I, I do know your point, but we do live, um, as we were told, in a free world, yeah? Capitalism, yes, which yeah. free market, yeah? Mm -hmm. So uh, free market means that um, market can uh, self-adjust with everything, no, yeah? It, that does not what, that's not what that means. No, you shouldn't... You, a free market does not mean that you are free to uh, do anything you want. No, that's yes, not I'm, what that I'm, means. I just, I just, I just, I just want to t take that. Sorry for interrupting you. I just want to mm, tell about this one as, a, as an example. Yeah. So, uh, in the market, we don't have to regulate the prices, for example, because market itself uh, works this way that uh, it, it, it finds out the price. Well, yeah, it, de it, it, it depends. Yeah. It depends. I mean, the, the price of uh, it depends on the demand and it depends on the supplying. Yeah that make a price. Uh, yeah, but yeah, what, what's that going to do with this, though? I mean, you, you're talking, I'm, I'm, you're talking I'm, about... I'm, 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 heading, I'm heading to that point. That, yeah, uh, you're going to have to hurry. <laughs> yeah, so basically, basically, we don't have to, uh, in my opinion, we don't have to regulate that. You don't that have to everything. regulate because uh, industry will clean its own act up because the public will demand it. Well, um, I'd love to uh, live in your world, uh, Revy, but I'm uh, afraid that's just you who lives there. You think that uh, corporations, we, we should just uh, bank on the kindness of corporations? Corporations are like sharks. They are amoral killers. They will remove anything in their way of uh, increasing their uh, profits and their power. So if we're going to rely on corporations to clean up the world, then uh, we're in for a bitter disappointment. Uh, Newcastle under Lyme. Hello, Guy. Yeah, hi, Nick. Nick, there'll be multi-factors uh, why we're in the situation we are. But if you allow me to touch on too quickly, please, I'd be appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, this is what I've witnessed in the course of my life. It's not a theory, it's what I've witnessed. But when I started work here in this city, it was awash with employment opportunities. Uh, and all of those employment opportunities were in factories, production, 
industry yeah. manufacturing. Making things. We took we made things, absolutely, and the factories weren't particularly nice. They were they were dirty and smelly and noisy. Mm. Um but it created wealth for the for the for the workers, for the community and for the country. Now this country has been deindustrial. My city has been deindustrialized. Uh, in a city of 250,000 people, I can comfortably forecast or say we've lost 50,000 manufacturing jobs in factories, whether, it's, whether it was digging coal, making ceramics, um, white goods, uh, tires, mm. uh, steel. They were all creating wealth. Those have all gone now. Now, we have got vacancies, but it's all £10, I think, 49 is it 50 an hour? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't provide you that... Um, the, 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 the cost of living doesn't isn't the same. The cost of living is far greater now than it was then. That's one. And then the second point I want to touch on is that... Is that I remember when I started work, there were some old chaps having a philosophical conversation, and, and I was intrigued that they said, when we were young, we'd got nothing to spend our money on. They must have been born in the 20s. Mm. And I'm thinking, I don't know, it lived with me. And when I think now, young people, now, my, my daughter, she's, got, she's a nurse. She's training to be a nurse. It's going to cost her £27,000. A mother who happens to be a nurse, didn't cost her a penny piece. Like, when we were, when I was my daughter, we didn't have mobile phones. My daughter's got a mobile phone, so there's a monthly contract. There's subscription TV. We never had subscription. Now, I'm, you know, now you've got to have the sky and what well, have you. Well, and then, you, you don't have to have those things, and people, no, are, people no. who are struggling, um, we, we shouldn't really uh, suggest, as some right-wing commentators would, that that is the reason why they're struggling, because they're, you know, they, they, they buy a mocha, fropper, crapper chino every day, and they uh, watch a Sky Sports. That That's just not the case. If people can't afford to pay their electricity to the point that they're putting it on a credit card, then that's not the problem. The problem, as you've uh, underlined, is that we used to have uh, an economy where people could have a decent job and a decent standard of living by creating wealth, by making things, but now th but that's pretty much the opposite of what we have. We don't, we don't create wealth in this country anymore because we don't make anything. We just shuffle numbers around on a screen and take money from one place and give it to uh, a few people in another place. That's, that's pretty much what we do. It's the financial services racket, which really takes out of the equation the vast majority of the people that live in this country. Hull, John. Hey, up, Mick. John. Morning. Yes, John. Uh, needs be as needs must, and get it sorted, get the list down, and then try and correct everything that everybody's banging on about, that underinvestment, staff leaving. We know all this, but we are where we are. So, get a grip of it, and um, I think it's a good idea. They've been doing it on the, quite a while, not as much as they're going to do. I had my hip done in a private hospital 10, 12 years ago, but it, it didn't cost me... All right, because they paid the private hospital, and that's what we'll be doing now. Yeah. But but we're not in a position to, to, to do what we'd like to do. That's the reality of it. So all this talk about underinvestment and the Tories this and the Tories that and wasting, and it's yes, we know all that, but we are where we are. But wouldn't it make more sense to, instead of spending the money that they're going to on private practice, to actually spend the same amount of money on the NHS. Yes, but they can't. They haven't got the staff to do it. That's my point. If if they had fifty thousand, seventy thousand more staff and more facilities and departments or buildings, whatever, mm. that would cost X amount. So there must be the spreadsheet brigade, which is too many of them, unfortunately. But that's the civil service for you. The spreadsheet brigade will be. Get the computers out and their calculators, and they'll be saying, "Right, well, if we can do these many procedures, and it's cost this, but we employed fifty thousand more nurses or whoever on X amount with stupid pensions that we can't afford, it costs this, and and it may cost a bit more, but at the end of the day, it has, this situation to me has to be tackled now. 
Yes, but surely what they're proposing is essentially renting these people and this uh, equipment rather than buying it. If they bought it, then it would be of benefit forever. But, but renting it requires paying all the time. With equipment, I'll give you a big yes there, but with staff, they can't get the staff. They, they can't cover what where I am now. The, you know, you probably know that there's, I think it's one in seven people in hospital are clinically... We've talked, I've talked about it before with Richard. They're clinically ready to go on, but they've got no package, so they yes. won't let them out. Right. Well, where, 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 where I am, they've just built a load of cabins, porter cabin things, and connected them all up. And um, I think it's either 60 or 80 beds to put these people in as a, as a tide over till they can go. And, and they can't and, manage, so and, they've... And, sub and they've no doubt called that a new hospital. Well, the, no. the, but the irony of it is that um, if they find that they don't have enough people directly employed by the NHS and they're then spending the money um, getting the pr private practitioners to do the work, the private practitioners either now or used to be working for the NHS. They're the same people. It's not a completely different army of medics. They're the same ones. It's just that if you go private, then there is the profit factor that is uh, in there. You'll pay a higher rate for the same thing because these private companies have to um, include a profit for themselves. I mean, economically, it doesn't really make much sense to me. But thanks, John. Hull. Charles. Oh, hi, Nick. Charles. Um, yeah, leaving centre of Hull... Pouring down with red yeah. mm -hmm. get on the bus, and I find myself sitting next to two young ladies speaking accent. And um, but the giveaway, one of them says CC. CC. So I'm only ah right. So I said, excuse me, sorry, but um, are you are you from Spain by any chance? And they said yes. I said, what are you doing here? I'm freezing cold. And the whole of the bus cracked up laughing. Mm. The whole of the bus. And, and um, it you must know, have been a very, very cold. loud conversation, Charles. Yeah, it, well, it, yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's whole. Everybody talks loudly. But then I got <laughs> off the bus in the rain. That is a, that is and a I true looked, fact. And I looked to the heavens and I shook my fist. To the, uh, to the the skies, and I say, God, why, mm. why, why God, is this happening why to me? Yeah. Have you cheat? Why are you treating the UK like this? Yeah. And the clouds came together to spell the word Brexit. Okay, thanks a lot, Charles. <sighs> Funny, I had the foresight that that's where it was going. I could have saved myself three minutes. Greenwich, Nathan. Hello, Nathan. Nick, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Good, good. Who's the old fodder that you just had on? <sighs> I missed the conversation. I came in halfway through. Uh, and I thought, hmm, man's got a point. And the bit that I didn't like about what you said was the 13%. Where did you get the 13% from? 13% of adults in London drive five or more times per week, which implies that a small number of... But where did you get that statistic from? I... Uh, yeah, uh, 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 come on, Nick. Faster. Quick. Come on. I can't recall. I'm looking at an entire page of statistics, um, none of which I've noted where I got the actual uh, figures from, but um, I probably from the government's own uh, website, Nathan, if uh, you really insist. I mean, you could look it up. 13% of adults in London drive five or more times per week. Put that into Google search and see what you get. Yes, Nadine Doris has been very, very quiet. Flitwick Town Council is urging its local MP, Nadine Dorries, to quit as an MP immediately. As in right now. Nadine Doris, MP for Mid-Bedfordshire, since she held her seat uh, since 2005. The people of Mid-Bedfordshire knew what they were voting for. She announced her intention to stand down as an MP with immediate effect on the 9th of June this year but has not formally resigned as of yet. Uh, somebody should send her a dictionary so she can look up the word immediate. The town clerk has sent a letter to the MP stating the following. 
Following a discussion at the recent meeting of Flitwick Town Council on Tuesday the 18th of July, I have been asked to write to you formally to raise the council's concerns and frustration at the continuing lack of representation for the people of Mid-Bedfordshire and at Westminster. The last time you spoke in the Commons was the 7th of June 2022. Oh, right, yeah. 2022. You have not maintained a constituency office for a considerable time, and it's widely understood that you have not held a surgery in Flitwick since March 2020. What? Rather than representing constituents, the council is concerned that your focus appears to have been firmly on your television show, upcoming book, and political manoeuvres to embarrass the government for not appointing you to the House of Lords. <laughs> How can you be so self-entitled that you think, uh, based on, uh, on her CV, that she deserves to spend the rest of her life as a, a lawmaker on our money in the House of Lords. I mean, just, does she really think that she's that qualified, or is it that she'd actually just quite like to be in the House of Lords? Yeah, nice. Why can't she have nice things? She was born in Liverpool, you know. Councillors noted, this is the letter, Councillors noted that your behaviour... Nadine Dorry's behaviour, widely reported in the press, is not in line with the seven principles of public life set out by Lord Nolan in 1995. <laughs> yeah, well, I think the seven principles of public life set out by Lord Nolan in uh, 1995 expired when a certain Mr Blobby uh, reached the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, from that moment on, all bets were off. The letter says, with an estimated population of 13,800 people, Flitwick represents the largest concentration of voters in the Mid-Bedfordshire constituency. Flitwick Town Council has a long history of operating on a non-political basis with a strong ethos that our council must represent the views and needs of residents regardless of any party politics. Our residents desperately need effective representation now, and Flitwick Town Council calls on you... Nadine Dorries to immediately vacate your seat to allow a by-election. Well, we've already established that she doesn't know what the word immediately means. Because she said she would stand down with immediate effect blooming ages ago. Andy, Andy Snape, not a name I made up, that is his actual name, Andy Snape, Flitwick's mayor and town councillor, stated that they are asking Nadine Dorries to do the right thing and move on so the town can have a by-election. He wants Nadine Doris to do uh, the right thing. <laughs> Best of luck with that. Perth, Mike. Hello, Nick. Mike. Yeah, yeah. I, how long do you think... Can I ask you a question? How long do you think it will take us to transition from... A, and so that we're never using oil and gas? How, oh, many, yeah. dec how many decades? I have no idea. Ah, well, there you go. You've just hit the nail on the head. And in the meantime, if we don't uh, issue the licences, have the oil drilled for on our doorstep, more or less, we're going to have to bring it in into the country with uh, huge tankers churning up greenhouse gases, billions of greenhouse gases into the air. Mm. And uh, it's going to cost an absolute fortune. From We have to bring them in from the USA or... Saudi Arabia, but as we, it comes, comes yeah, from. But as we only, so we're going to have to bring it in, right, pay for but, it. Okay, but as we don't own the oil and the gas that is being taken out of the North Sea, we're going to have to buy it on the open market. It's not our gas and oil, it's China's gas and oil, it's the United Arab Emirates, it's Norway's gas and oil. It's, it's on our doorstep, but you've, you've also missed a vital point in your prelude there with the, with the journalist. They, they don't, the, these licences aren't, as far as I believe, these licences are, are, aren't just handed over. They cost multi-millions of pounds, to get, actually. So to the Treasury, the Treasury is going to gain to the tune of um, absolutely millions and millions of pounds. Plus, plus once these oil-producing companies uh, produce the oil uh, and they sell it, they will reap huge, huge profits, which will be taxed by the UK government. Another source of 
millions and millions of pounds. So the oil will will actually be a benefit for the UK taxpayer. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure that any of that's actually true. I mean, if a Norwegian company takes oil out, oil and gas out of the North Sea, then they will surely get tax in in Norway because they they're not selling it here. They're selling it to the open market, and then we buy it from the open market. There's they're also there's out also of UK UK territory, so they will have to pay for it. No, I don't think that's how it works. There's also the fact that we subsidise the oil and gas industry. You know, when when they have finished taking as much as they can out of the North Sea, we, the taxpayer, then decommission those rigs for them. No, It's heads you, they you, win, you, tails we yeah. lose. Well, your words there, your words were, you don't think. Well, I... I think I think you're wrong. Nick. I think that I I think that they have they will the UK uh, taxpayer will, will benefit uh, when these uh, oil and right. You're hoping you're you're crossing your fingers and hoping that what has not happened in the past might happen in the future. Well, good luck with that, Mike. And the issue about um, it's on our doorstep, so it will uh, avoid the uh, the pollution that is involved in uh, shipping it here and there, doesn't stand up either because we don't use all of the oil and gas that is going to come out of the North Sea, we, it, it is then shipped elsewhere. So it's going to get shipped, doesn't matter who takes it. It's not used at point of uh, extraction. Glasgow, hello Steve. Oh, Steve. Oh, Steve. Hi, how are you ah, doing? There you are. Uh, just a quick one for a minute, my main. Yes. Hi, can you hear me? Go ahead. Hi there, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Um, just a quick one before um, before I m make my main point. Mm -hmm. That Nigel that Nigel Farage clip, um, he really cracks me up because you've got a seven second delay, and he still lets that guy talk. <laughs> so you can cut oh. him off before he <laughs> goes to you, and he still let him go. So That's right. It just shows you how, impre how unprofessional he actually is. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, and so my, uh, my main point is, why do we keep continuing to listen to people like Tony Blair? He's a spokesperson for a funding group that lobbies, he, he lobbies on behalf of. I don't understand it. And the point he's trying to make is that um, we, we shouldn't be paying, other companies currently should be paying because they pollute more. Now let's, let's analyse that. There's two reasons that that's a reductive argument. China wait a minute, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, wait, 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 hey, hey, Steve, 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 hang on, back up. Um, so you're saying that Tony Blair says what? Yes, yeah. hi. What? Huh? Oh no, his phone. Tony gone. Blair was saying oh, that um, country, countries like Britain. Yeah. Should, hello, uh, hi. Tony Blair was saying that countries like Britain shouldn't pay as much as other countries who pull out more. My, as a, this, this resulted for two reasons. Pay as much because in China has got one point two billion people. Hang on a minute. We've got sixty-five wait, million wait people. Wait a minute. Pa pay as much in what regard? For what? Um towards environmental controls to bring down pollution in the environment. Right. That was his argument. That's what he was saying today, or yesterday, about this. So what, my argument is that, in two, two, front, two fronts, he's wrong. We should stop listening to him. The my front is that China's got 1.2 billion people and produce 30% of the pollution environmentally across the world. Mm. We've got 60 million, 65 million people. Yeah. So their, their population is 20 times greater than ours, for a start. But right. that, only, that, hides, that hides the real truth. The truth of the matter is that the, the majority of production is created, we, that we consume is created in other countries. So we're outsourcing our environmental yes. impact to other countries, That's whether right. it be technology, whether it be food, whether it be clothing. So we don't, we don't produce, as a country, yes, we only produce 2% emissions, but individual, if you look at the individuals within countries, we consume more uh, per head of population individually than other countries, say even China. Yeah. I think the, the stats, if you look at it on the global index, we we consume as individuals 20 times more than somebody in China does. Right. If yeah. you look at the consumption that we, I, we I, make. I, yeah, so I, it's a highly reductive I, argument. All right, I, under making. I understand you completely. What I don't really understand is what this, this reference to paying more. Who, who are we paying? There's some delay. It's like I'm talking to you on he's the he's International Space Station, in, Steve. In taxation. Right. Okay, but it, we're not paying some central body. I don't know what's body going on here. That, No, I don't know it, and, and it's, it's a bit difficult because there seems to be a delay. But okay, and I agree with you completely. Yes, 
China may pollute more than uh, us in uh, in this country specifically, but in, in the West in general. But that is um, in large part because we have offshored our pollution. Not only do we send our rubbish and our, um, our thrown away clothes and uh, papers and uh, uh, electronic equipment and all of that to uh, third world countries for them to sort out and for the poisons to leak into their waterways and uh, as soon as the, those boats uh, leave we <coughs> wave all that mess a cheery bye bye and then kid on like it's got nothing to do with us anymore but we we also we, we don't make much in this country anymore we we get china to make the stuff for us china and taiwan and wherever it might be and so the pollution that is created by making our stuff might not happen in this country but it's happening because of us. So, yeah. And I do agree with you, Steve. We should listen to Tony Blair less. <laughs> For uh, a wide variety of reasons, uh, chief amongst which is um, his hair. What is it with billionaires? And, well, I guess he's not a billionaire, but he consorts with billionaires. He's a multi-millionaire. What is it about the super rich that makes them have hair like that? I mean, they've all got it. Richard Branson's got that hair, that sort of scraped back. Um, it, it's tidy at the front because it's scraped back. But then there's this just this sort of colossal, unkempt explosion of hair behind them. As though a, an enormous length in the back makes up for a lack of it in the front. It's like a, a, a billionaire's mullet. They've all got the same blooming haircut. Anybody that's got a haircut like that should be listened to less. That is, um, that should be uh, the, our number one priority. It's the country's number one priority. It's my number one priority up and down the country, and that will be our focus. Priority. It's our number one priority. <laughs> He's the prime minister of this country. Can you believe that? No. What a way to run a nation, eh? Dreadful. Croydon. Hello, Andy. Hi there, Nick. Um... Yeah, the, uh, the the guy that phoned up second to lo uh, not the last caller, the one before, going on about trolley buses. There's no trolley buses in Greenwich. He means electric buses, surely. Um, I thought he was referring to um, uh, uh, trams. Uh, I'm not aware they've got those in, uh, in Greenwich. The trolley buses, they, they, they were the old buses with the overhead power lines, weren't they? Like, like the old trams. But, um, but anyway, this, uh, this ULES charge, it's, I, I think everyone would agree that something has to be done about air quality, but uh, this ULES charge is being brought in, or rather being extended. It's going to have a devastating effect on thousands and thousands of Londoners, simply due to the cost of it. Uh, yes, you could say that it's going to have a beneficial effect to thousands and thousands of Londoners by improving the quality of the air they breathe. Well, you could. You could say that. But then again, uh, people are going to lose their jobs. One man, sort of one man band businesses that have to use a vehicle, uh, can't afford to buy a new vehicle and so on. Um, that's going to reduce their, their income. That's going to have an impact on their, uh, likely to have an impact on their quality of life. Mm. But you could have made the you could have made the same arguments for um, not uh, heating your home with coal. I mean, any well, you, any well, change could, well, is well, is going could, to but... is going to inconvenience or cost a certain number of people, even if eventually a hundred percent of people benefit from it. Well, uh, I mean, is the argument that it swings that, and roundabouts, it, isn't it? it? Swings and roundabouts. Well, really. not, I mean, given, given, really. given the cost of living and and the, the you, you know the. the the struggle everyone is having now. Hmm. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that, that can't afford a vehicle now because, of, well, once this scheme is extended, and, and um, there's just as many people can't afford to heat their home, be it coal or, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, the, the population is getting poorer and poorer by the week, and and uh, adding on charges like twelve pound fifty a day just to, just to drive to work. I, I mean, it's just insane. And a lot of the suburbs of London, and, you know, they're quite rural. They've got no public transport at all, really, to speak of. Uh, it, 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 what are people meant to do? The scrappage scheme? 
doesn't apply to most of us anyway. Right, now I wonder if we can concentrate on that then. I mean, perhaps an answer to this would be the government releasing funds, which is within their ability, to actually give people who need it the, uh, the recompense that's required to change their vehicles. Yes, I would agree with you totally. But they, they haven't done that and they no. show no sign of doing that. No, because I, I suspect that this actually plays into their hands, that they can, even though these schemes were uh, Tory ideas, uh, dreamt up uh, under Boris Johnson's uh, mayorship in London, uh, and insisted upon by the Tory government, they, they, the Conservatives have found a way to actually blame the Labour Party for what was their own idea. And, yes. um, and <clears throat> because it, it plays well for them, they're not inclined to offer people um, the, uh, the, the necessary amount that they would need to change their vehicles because it's just another one of these uh, woke issues that they think they can um, divide and conquer and by that method uh, win the next general election by, by making as many people as they, as they can, as angry as they can. Yes, I agree totally. But that doesn't make it right, does it? And that doesn't help the people that will be affected. But I wonder if there's never a good time to, to do this, this kind of thing. There will always be a time when people are finding it hard to get by and there'll always be some kind of problem, some uh, a, a, a significant number of people who will be um, inconvenienced, to put it mildly, by any change. So, therefore, we should never have change of any kind because there'll always be somebody complaining about it. Well, yeah, I mean, that is a fair, that is a fair comment. Um, but, uh, it, it, whatever, and I'm, I'm not against the idea in principle. Don't get me wrong there, right? The, the, it's clear that something has to be done to clean up planet Earth. I'm, I'm, I'm not arguing that at all. But this, this way of doing it, I, I'm not sure. I mean, why £12.50 for a start? You know, they, they they could still have raised money by by charging less. Why twelve pound fifty? That's a lot of money. Well, I wonder that's if over, that's over four thousand a year if you use your vehicle every day. I know it is because I bought a I bought a full forty plus year old vehicle, so I'm exempt. Right? Huh? It's you know it's over <laughs> four grand. It's well, that that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, but well, you know, if people commute using public transport in this country, it's quite likely that if they use the trains, for instance, that they're going to be spending that kind of money per day anyway. Yes, but a lot of the suburbs don't have public transport, especially if you get out to the rural edges. Mm. And also, what about the people that live outside but have to come in for work? Right. You know, some of those people are living in the middle of nowhere. Uh, well, uh, there's, there's always a train station near the middle of nowhere. Oh, uh, there's not. No, there's not. And even if there is, you, you know, the reliability and frequency of trains it just is not, it's not like central London. Right. Well, that, I, I, I will agree on that. Absolutely. Yeah. OK, thanks, Andy. Huddersfield. Pete. Hi, how you doing? Good, thanks. Um, OK, so... Um, I've got two points. Um, I, I, it seems like it's um, you, the argument about not drilling for more oil is ideological because the two most important things, one of the two most important, two of the most important things for me are comfort, i.e. being warm in winter, and mm. the most important thing is freedom of travel, so uh, freedom of movement, and that's my car. And I think everybody feels the same. Everybody in the country wants to keep those two things. And unless... Well, I didn't know until I heard you say it that we weren't going to become in any way fuel independent from these uh, the granting of new licences. No. But we do need, we need more fuel. Yes, but, but it doesn't really matter whether we, whether we grant these licences in the North Sea or not. We will be buying that fuel on the open market. Oh, doesn't, open it, market. It's completely irrelevant where it comes from. Well, because we have to sell it to the highest bidder and get well, the open market no, value yes, for there's it. There's no we about it. Well, it's not ours. It will be so what, the United well, Arab Emirates and China and Norway, uh, in large part. 
So what is the benefit? What, who benefits? Somebody must be benefiting from, from the granting of these licences in this country. Who benefits? Uh, well, <laughs> that's a very good question. And who benefits? You could say, well, it's the Conservative Party because they have taken large um, amounts of money from the, the very companies that might be associated with um, that extraction. Mm. Mm. You could well, also say, I mean, I, I half suspect that Rishi Sunak is uh, doing this, knowing full well that these oil wells will not, or gas wells, will not start producing any energy for at least 15 years, that he's just doing it in order to stick it to the libs, to, um, but, to if stoke this uh, woke war. So what is the, um, what is the alternative? Um, who is the alternative? Are Labour saying that they will do something better, something that will be more productive for the people of the UK, or are we just... Well, are they all peeing in the same pot as regards to this issue? Well, uh, disappointingly, the Labour Party have said that they will not um, close any wells that have already been opened, so they appear to be signing up to uh, continuing with these uh, 100 plus oil and gas wells that uh, Rishi Sunak has just announced. Well, then we're, it's a lose lose situation for <laughs> everyone except for the, for the for lobbyists the, and, and the oil companies. And the oil um, companies, yeah. They yeah. win again, yeah. All right, thanks, Pete. Colchester, hello, Chris. Hi, Nick, all right? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just something you said earlier about. Um, forcing people to vote, which I, I don't agree with. Um, I think part of the choice is is not voting. Um, and, you know, I would never want to be forced to vote for one of these parties. I'm ah, well, that's the point. You don't have to. All you have to do is to show up. You can just, you can write, a, uh, a, you can draw a Mickey Mouse face on that's your... That's exactly what I do. Yeah. I spoil my card. Right. Well, that's up to you. But you, you, yeah. you should have to show up. Right. Okay, well, that's a different argument. What? So you shouldn't be forced to vote, but as long as you show up. Yeah, you have to show up. Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. It is your democratic um, right to spoil your ballot paper. That's up to you. But you should right, actually yeah. be in a place where you're presented with that ballot paper to make that choice, not just yeah, sitting at no. home thinking, "Oh, well, never mind. I'll do it tomorrow." Yeah. No, I agree with that. Okay. But um, yeah, no, and another thing about the sign scientific consensus yeah. I, you know it, uh, there's no such thing really with science like we saw that with the lockdowns and stuff like we had so called uh, consensus with that that didn't turn out to be right so science should always be challenged yes um, I agree science should always be challenged but if, 99, if over 99% of scientists who have looked into an issue say one thing then it takes a bold person of um, great self-regard to disagree with that 99 plus percent of scientists yeah but we saw that with with the lockdowns we saw the great barrington declaration with people like sinatra gupta um martin called off um who signed they were the main three that signed the uh, great barrington declaration they were the bold voices and we saw with the emails with anthony fauci that they were trying to be. They were trying to silence them people, and they were like the one percent. All these scientists that we heard for on the radio mm, and yeah. But are, are you? So let's cut to the chase. Are you one of the people that thinks that because a uh, a medicine or a medical intervention harmed a few people, then it should not have been um, applied to anyone? No, I, di I didn't even. I, I wasn't even mentioning the COVID vaccines. I was. I was talking about the lockdown. Um, oh, oh, oh. The, the the consensus with that the lockdown was oh right. it, it was going to but yeah the the same thing can apply to to um, to medical interventions as well. But like, then then you should yeah. never take another medicine, though, Chris, because you know that piece of paper that comes with your pills. No, that don't be you. That, you don't know the piece of man you, thing. you know the piece of paper that doesn't. You, yeah, the pills. You you, yeah, you, but, you must have taken pills in your life. There's a piece of paper that comes with them. I guarantee, regardless of what that medicine is, there will be a list of uh, negative uh, p potential negative effects as long as you're on, up to and including death. Right. Just because it has affected a very small number of people does not mean to say that that medicine is not beneficial to the vast majority. But you can sue that company, can't you, who, who made it? 
Uh, with a drug, yeah. you can't do it with vaccines, so that's that's a bit different. But I never well, made you, that argument. You can. No, you can't. Of course, you they, can. They've got liability. No, they've got liability protection. Well, any uh, if, if the vaccine people have got liability protection, then then the manufacturer of any medicine uh, have. No, it's different. The, you can sue people for a drug, but with the vaccines, they've got liability protection. So you can only sue the government. This happened with the swine flu vaccine in 2009 when people got injured with narcolepsy and they had to sue the government. Right. OK, so, so, it's, some, it's so some, some uh, medicines, some uh, medical advances have had negative effects to some people. So at, yeah. what, at what point do we um, then lose trust with all medical advance? No, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say lose trust with all advice. It, it, no, but it, it should just be more open. That's all I'm asking for. But I, I was just talking about consensus with, with lockdown. And, and I think you... But you how, know, how did you, you get you, onto that, though? When was no, I talking about lockdown? That. I didn't get on, Me? No, I, I, didn't, you, I haven't mentioned lockdown on this show. No, that, but that's what I mentioned. You started talking about vaccines. I, I never mentioned vaccines. I talked about a scientific you, consensus. Right. You, so presumably the scientific consensus that you initially talked, uh, initially called in about was the one on climate change. Because I certainly have not talked or discussed or, or mentioned at all, not even for one solitary second, the lockdown on this hang show. On. Now, hang on. It's generally, I'm talking about a scientific consensus generally uh, but, regarding, but, lo re regarding climate change. Right, climate then, change. Okay, then, so, but your assertion is that there is no climate, there is no scientific consensus on climate change. But that is not true because over 99% of scientific papers written about climate change agree. So that is a consensus. Right. Yeah, but I said there's no such thing as a scientific consensus. Yes, there is, Chris. Over 99% is a consensus. Right. Not, look, you can pay anyone to agree with it. You, that's not a... Hang on a minute. No wait, 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 wait. You're saying that the scientists who say that climate change is no, a thing... No, I, did, I have said been you could pay... ...paid to look, say that. Nick, don't play games. Look, I'm you, not playing games. Gonna... You're all over the shop, Chris. First of all, you introduce lockdowns, which is, which is a subject I haven't talked about since we were in lockdown. And second, you say that there is no such thing as a scientific consensus on anything, which is complete nonsense. You only have to think about that for two seconds to realise that that's rubbish. How about gravity, for one? I haven't got the patience, Chris. I really don't. Uh, you're one of those people that's done their own research. Can't stand it. Uh, let's have Woolwich. Richard. Oh, hi, Nick. Uh, nice to speak to you. Can, can you put those uh, pictures on Twitter? <laughs> I'll put them on <laughs> yeah. in Instagram. <laughs> yes. Nick, I have a quick reflection. Um, I think we need a Henry Ford of our age, don't we? Someone who will produce these really good quality mass-produced electric vehicles. Don't we have um, uh, BMW and Volkswagen and Tesla and uh, those funny cars that come from I've got no idea where? Yeah, but I mean, I mean, obviously in Ford, he he, we had all of those kind of cars coming through, but that that was that the one person who had the idea and vision to kind of mass produce them cheaply for the yeah. masses. Well, he had a production I, line. He invented the production yeah, line. But, exactly. But, but we have that, don't we? Um, You're going to reinvent well, the production line. Well, I, well, what I want to do is for electric cars because I just think that I, I still think they're really expensive. Yeah. And I think if we can have that kind of shift in thinking... But you're right. It's actually you're you're quite right. It's a good challenge. It's it's just a production line for electric cars. So well, maybe it's the, not an original thought at all. No, I don't think so. <laughs> it's weird <laughs> that you would have spent so long on the hold and not thought of that. But I think the problem with electric cars is the batteries. We just have not had a, a revolution in battery technology. I mean, if we could just get that. I mean, for crying out loud, this phone that I am holding in my hand needs charging pretty much every day. It doesn't really do anything. So how come we can't get a phone that requires one charge for, like, say, a week or a month? Why, why not? So when we do that, then uh, other things will, then you know, benefits will follow. Uh, no, you're right. See, that's that's the really interesting thing. So that the Tories have gone over to 
talking, you know, basically going back to making car, demonizing cars and trying to get people back on their side with that car whole car thing. But there's a bigger picture here. Did you and say the right. Tories are demonizing cars? They're not. It's um, the opposite of that. It's the opposite. No, I don't know. I'm not informed tonight, am I? Um, well, I don't know what you on form sounds like, Richard. You, you, you could be knocking it out the park. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I think you're going to the news, but, uh, so I'll... I'll, I'll yeah, you're, you you're, you're 15 minutes out, but, you know, close enough for jazz. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Richard. <laughs> I think Richard is underperforming. I've got no idea why. Booze. Maybe. Bloomsbury. Sophia. Good evening, Nick. How yes, are you? Sophia. I'm super. Thanks for asking. I'm glad to hear you. Are you? Yes. Are you? I'm, I'm glad uh, like to know that um, people so concerned with management these days. What? That uh, we got the reply back from Westminster. We? Uh, yes. Who's we? Um, well, me and Simone. Oh, just, uh, Simone. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we should have dancing, said. Dancing around looking like... Uh, Something out of Are the Are you dancing? Well. We were, yeah. I'm asking. Mm? In the corridor. And uh, <laughs> the very dull Sir Solomon came along and said, oh, you shouldn't let the management see you do Solomine, that. Solomon, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. She, yeah she's, no, said, she's such a, uh, a buzzkill, Solomon. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't exactly. know why you. I don't know why you invite her around. Honestly, I don't. Well, you're better just, without her, Sophia. Better to try to keep her away. That was the main problem. I'll say. But um, they're getting so management conscious. The they? point is, uh, people who uh, nowadays we want to have. Um, Who's they? Uh, uh, Names. My, I want names, Sophia. Who are well, they? Well, I'm just saying for my master's thesis... N name the them design. and shame them. Who are they? Uh, uh, that, uh, um, my yes. master's thesis, uh, uh, Alan Turing is now on the oh, back of the, the £50 note. Mm -hmm. oh, well, well, I, I mean, could only they, dream of having important. a £50 note. Yeah, well, as Keats says, beauty is truth and truth is beauty. And, Who said uh, that? Yeah, in the Keith. 1830s. Keith said that. Uh, uh, well, Keith is another one. Keith. Fighting in the war. He, cer he certainly is another one, yeah. But uh, we don't want to take the money away from uh, well, people... Well, you certainly who, are making a lot of sense, Sophia. ...who have made... who have earned it, uh, you know. Yeah, it's quite this. Quite right. I mean, I'm partially sighted, but, I mean, if people are, are very handicapped, they still might get the cure if they want to fight it back. Then they, 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 their money is theirs. There's no way other well, way. I, I couldn't have put it better myself. Thanks a lot, Sophia. You really have uh, set us straight on a whole raft of issues there. Excellent start to the show. Cheers, my dear. No, I have no idea either. <laughs> I expect it's my fault. It, it's it's my fault, isn't it? Yes. Jeff Woking. Nick. Hello. Jeff. Did you want to have a sip of water? Uh, yes, I will. Thanks very much for asking. Just a quick, just a, just a quick. Yeah. Mmm. Mm. Fresh, right, delicious, a... fresh, delicious water. Good man. Um, a bit of light relief, Nick. Yes. I think you're absolutely right. When they bleep out the swear words in a film, mm. you spend the rest of the film wondering what the swear word was. It just, um, it trips you up. Like, you're, yes. you're there, you're with them, and you're yes. invested in the story, and then they bleep a, a word, or, um, or what's actually worse is they replace it with something that sounds a bit like the swear word, but isn't. Yes, I thought, careful, I thought you were going to say it then. No. Yeah. And, no, um, no. and it just trips you up. It just, yeah. um, it, uh, it takes you out of the film uh, that you were um, sort of inside. What? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of rock and roll, Nick, mm -hmm. uh, you have to remember from an earlier caller, in the early days, it was John, Paul, George and Bev. Yeah. You know, Bev being the drummer in the ELO, so that's the, there's the input there. Um, I've still got an LP by Zager and Abbott. Uh, I wonder if you sign it for me. Zager and Abbott. Now, there in was, the year... Yeah, but that's not... No, oh. that wasn't Zager and Abbott. That was Zager and... Evans. Was it Zager good, and Evans? Good Evans. Right. Good Evans, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, back in the late 60s, Nick, I went into my local record store 
and I asked if they had anything by the doors. They said a fire extinguisher and a bucket of sand. Oh, these are the jokes, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Say goodnight, Jeff. Good night, Jeff. Epsom, Ricardo. Nick, good evening. Uh, first time caller, so bear with me. Good man. Uh, I literally just kind of put the radio on and heard the conversation about LTNs. What I wanted to say was, in 2021, the Department of Transport, which, well, correct me if I'm wrong, is an independent or it's the government's you know, Department of Transport, as it says on the tin. Hmm. They carried out an independent study to LTNs, and mainly the 10 LTNs across London at the time. Now, they concluded that an extra 41 million miles had to be driven within that 12-month calendar year by drivers across those 10 LTNs in London to complete their journey. Now, what part of 41 million extra miles being put onto our roads and, you know, fumes and stuff being pumped into the atmosphere actually goes to, you know, towards the goal of you know, uh, cleaner air, as uh, 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 Sadiq Khan says. Mm. You know, I mean, to put into perspective, I think the sun is 90 million miles from the earth. Well, so uh, we're asking... I'm, I'm, un, I'm unaware of the, this uh, study. Uh, well, I, 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 I did look up whether there had been studies into the uh, the results of the imposition of these areas, and uh, and there were a couple, and they both um, the, the the two that I saw concluded that um, pollution went down and the amount no, of traffic both within the zones and no, on the outside of the zones also went down. The Department of Transport came up and they said that it's on the Department of Transport website, it's on the AA website. If you go into Google and put something like 41, 41 million extra miles driven in LTN, it should come up. It's a bit of investigative work by people, by journalists, if they actually spent time just investigating that fact, well, you that, know, whether or not ULOs or LTN, would but that's yeah, but the, the Department of Transport wouldn't hire journalists to do it, so that, well, that doesn't well, sound right to me. Well, journalists should do their job and actually uh, say it to the public. People like us who are going to have you know, I, I live right on the outskirts, and luckily for me, my car is uh, ULO compliant. However, I've got friends and family within. Uh, you know, the ULA zone, which, who are going to have to pay. And interestingly, you know, Mayor Khan came out last week saying crime, you know, is, uh, uh, it, it's, it's associated with those on the least money. Now, those with the least money seem to be the ones who have got the oldest car, so they're going to be the ones being uh, punished by uh, Mayor Khan. So, yeah, but, you know, it, but, so it's, but it's not. It's not. It's sense. not Mayor Khan's um, policy. It's Boris well, Johnson's is, policy, who, 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 and Grant Shapps at the Department of Transport insisted upon its reintroduction after COVID and its expansion as a precondition to funding transport for London. Chingford, hello, John. Oh, hi, Nick. John. Is it John from Chingford? I don't know. Is it? Oh, yeah, no, sorry, you normally say John from Ching, but anyway, good I evening. I did just uh, say John from well. Chingford. Listen to me when I'm speaking to you. Oh. Coming <laughs> through sorry. clear as a bell. Uh, just, just John to, in hello. Chingford. Yes, John. Hello? Yeah, just, hello. just a two-parter, if I may, yeah. um, on, on cinema. Uh, have you seen Oppenheimer? Because you said that was on your list. It is on my list. No, I have not seen it yet. The only thing oh, I've it's... seen lately is um, the, the uh, Mission Impossible, which was... Um, Okay, it's not a five-star movie. It's like, say, four out of five, but there's very few five-star films. But I do feel that if you came out of that movie and uh, were uh, disappointed, then it, you'd be, I don't know, a bit hard-hearted, really. I mean, the man... This is a, sp a spoiler alert. Warning! Warning! Close your ears if you don't want to know anything about it for the next ten seconds. The man actually drives a real motorbike off a real cliff. I mean, what more do you want? Yeah, actually, actually, it's underperformed at the box office, which is um, a bit, you know, it's, uh, I think, um, number 16 in America and worldwide number eight. I mean, that and Indiana Jones have uh, yeah. not actually uh, garnered the, um, it's a strange trend in cinema. I mean, the number well, one. Well, listen, uh, let, ha, ha, I bet the number one box office movie is Barbie. No, no, not yet. I mean, the only the only film to take over a billion dollars worldwide is Super Mario. 
Well, I rest my case. Don't yeah. don't judge I'll, I'll a film. Wait um, a minute. Don't judge hello. a film. Hello. Hello. I'm still here. Sorry. <laughs> I know. That's it's the tra- evening, That's sorry. the tragedy of it, John. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no this don't. Was a pleasure, Nick. Is it? Don't judge. Well, I'll I'll see to that. Don't judge a film by its popularity. The greatest films that have ever been made were deeply unpopular on release. All the uh, the the most popular films are just uh, popcorn for the eyeballs. Yeah, well, that's the point I was trying to make because I mean, um, in America, it's Super Mario, Barbie, Spider Man. Guardians of the Galaxy right. and Little children's, Mermaid. Yeah, children's films. Yeah. Oh. But, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's the, the, you know, where, I mean, the thing that attracted me about Oppenheimer is actually a blockbuster made for adults. Yeah, very, very unusual. Not You don't see, yeah. you don't see much of that. I tried to get into um, uh, Oppenheimer. Yeah, no, you did mention. I want, oh, I'm repeating myself? Is, is no, this you, a, is you mentioned this a, on earlier shows. Is this a complaint call now? <laughs> no, not at all. It's the reason I'm talking about Oppenheim because you said you were going to try and see it yeah. at the IMAX or something, but it was you, fully booked. You couldn't, you couldn't get in. You couldn't even get in at nine o'clock in the morning. What? How right. is it that people are going to see a film at nine a.m.? How early would you have to get up? Yeah, I mean Barbie will uh, probably do number one. It's number two in oh. America. Can on, you, re- on the, can on, you rephrase and, that? Um, can you rephrase and, that? Uh, is that is that Sorry? a new is that a new facility for the Barbie doll? Because they used to <laughs> they, used to, they used to have one that cries, and now yeah. really that is a step up in technology. I had no idea that they'd uh, they'd managed to do that, or that anybody would want a doll that did that. Anyway, I, I think I've made my point, and you've been very generous with have your you? time. Okay, so. well, if that if that's the way it went for you, then John, then I'm I couldn't be more delighted. <laughs> Number one, you say. Hmm. Let's have Heston. Hello, James. Uh, hi, Nick. Uh, thanks for taking my call, mate. Listen, I know how much you like music, man. I love it. I know you've talked about Floyd. and But, but I, was, I was having this argument with my brother, Neil, yeah? And I know you, you're a big fan of Mr. Blue Sky, and I am as well, man. I love a yellow and the Beatles. But we were having a massive argument. It's a stupid, like, family argument you shouldn't really have. But I just think that, um, to be honest, man, the Beatles ripped the yellow off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good, think- good thinking, James. Keep thinking. <clears throat> it's what you do best. <laughs> so they got into a time machine and they went ahead ten years to rip ELO off, the Beatles. Yep, that makes sense to me. As much sense as anything else has happened on this show so far. Good work, James. Heathrow. Hello, Michael. Hi, Nick. Hello. Uh, I've got a few points to make. Uh, first of all, I've got a scientific background, and I, I think the the uh, predictions are pretty pretty accurate. So we we're in trouble. We need to do something. But I think the the what Greenpeace did with Sunak's uh, house is more to please the people who give them money, not to actually achieve anything. Well, we're I talking think, we're talking about it. Surely that is an achievement of sorts. Yeah, it is. But we're also talking about just stop oil. But what gets done? Nothing. If they started talking about positive actions and what people would do, it, it might have a result and they could get people on board. But what but can people do, do when, the, when the government sets itself on opening 100 oil and gas wells? Well, what we've got to do is stop needing it, haven't we? So why don't they encourage kids to go to walk to school or go by bike and see what achievements they can make? What, what about putting up prizes for, for schools to um, reduce uh, energy consumption in schools? Yes, well, all these are very good ideas, but it's not going to stop a corporation that is interested only in what profit it can make tomorrow in um, make, in trying as uh, as much as they can to make that happen, regardless of how many children walk to school. It won't make the slightest bit of difference. Yeah, but that, that then leads to a love matter, right? Which is, if you look at the, if you look at the big generation sites like in the North Sea, yeah, these, these massive projects are, are limited to very large companies with big pockets. Hmm. But why don't they encourage the small, small uh, communities to generate their own energy and benefit? What they want to do is keep the profit with the big companies. Local communities can can, can put themselves up a wind turbine. They can have one of these uh, uh, methane methane digesters. They people, lots of people have got rivers by them. They can generate small amounts of electricity there. 
And I'm, I'm, not sure that, I'm not sure that any of these things uh, are just something that a local community can do. I mean, they would all need planning permission, and I don't think you can create energy from your local river. There has to be some law about that. And I don't see that any of these things was going to make a difference because if the government is intent on, please, uh, what on the surface to me looks like, pleasing their donors by allowing more oil and gas extraction. But these things can still be done regardless of what the, the government's doing to please its mates. Well, I, I think that we can, we can all uh, make an effort uh, to uh, use less energy. Yes, certainly. And the high price has um, caused a lot of people to do just that lately. I'm sure that um, many people who would not have thought of uh, in the winter putting on, who wouldn't have thought twice about putting on the heating, might have um, reconsidered that in light of how much their gas and electricity bills are. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we've all done uh, something in that regard. Uh, let's have uh, uh, Bermondsey, Lavinia Grace. Oh, hi. Lavinia how Grace. Are you, Nick? I am great, mate. Uh, uh, lovely to hear your voice. It really is, Nick. Is it? You know that? Yes, it is. <laughs> well, uh, 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 what I'd like to talk about is... Um, Yes. Are you there? Yes. Yes. I, well, I want to... I'm hanging on your every word. You said what I'd like to talk about, and then there was an echoing silence. It's had to do with Prince Harry. Prince um, Harry, right? Yeah. And what I want to say now, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, you want to say, to... want to score yeah. some pot? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Um, I'm uh, very concerned about his uh, well-being at the moment. Are you? Yes, I am, because I'll tell you why, Nick. Why? Because he... He is... A, a loss. And if he was... He, he, really, back really... Back up. He, he's a what? Sorry. Lost soul. A lost soul. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, what yes, makes you say that? Soul. Because he, if... He was really, really happy. Yeah. H-A-P-P-Y. <laughs> yes. And then? If he was really, really, truly in love and happy, mm. he would not be uh, uh, behaving as he does when he's over here uh, fighting these uh, silly court cases with the press. Okay, hold on, hold on. Then... <laughs> Who are, you who are you telling to hold on? Me, or is it somebody there who's interfering with uh, sorry. you? Sorry, uh, um, I'm actually trying to get my words out at the moment. Right. Nick, right. All I want to say is that I'm really concerned about his health. And what I want to <laughs> say is... <laughs> no, hold on, Nick, please, please. Because I tell you why I'm like this. Why? And I'm actually feeling like this. Yes. Because uh, before I saw his picture in a paper, I had this feeling in my heart that mm -hmm. there's... Uh, something awful with him. Something, something. Um, he's he's uh, uh, not you, a happy bunny. You got a right? sensation. Yes. Right, as though the universe was speaking to you. Yes, but it was. They said, uh, "Wake up, Lavinia." No, no, Nick. It was uh, speaking in my heart. And right. You're, he you're hearing. Happened. You're hearing voices. Yes. No, not that. It was coming from my heart. H a. What's it? H-E-A-R-T. Heart. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and what I want to say is about uh, Prince Harry, is mm. that he looks so... Um, uh, what's the word? Actually, so unhappy, and he looks like he's lost. You know, you know, like a lost soul. And what I want to say, if uh, um, William... Um, furthermore. Uh, Prince yeah. William... Hold on, Nick. Mm -hmm. If... Uh, Prince <laughs> William is listening, and also Kate. <laughs> I would like them, yeah, um, uh, um, uh, to reach out to him. Right. Well, it's you. You seem to be uh, spending a lot of time thinking about this, Lavinia Grace. They're, no, they're, I'm not thinking about it because I see a picture in the paper, Nick. Yeah. Uh, please. The, the pictures I, in the paper have been deliberately selected to make him look sad. But he can't be happy because if he was really, really happy, Nick, yeah. he wouldn't be. He would not be uh, behaving the way he has done over here. 
behaving the way he has done, which was uh, taking people to court for what looked to me like justifiable reasons is not a bad thing. What has he gained out of it? What has he gained? What would he gain by ignoring it? You think you think the right wing press are going to stop their constant attacks? No. No. Exactly. No, so not. so he's no. supposed to just no. stand there taking a pummeling over and over and over again. No, I'm on um, I'm on uh, uh, um, the the side of uh, Hazard and Sparkles. Uh, uh, well, I'm on his side, but what right. I want to say, Nick, is if he was being uh, what's the word actually fulfilled uh, within his heart? <laughs> if he was really, really fulfilled and yeah. really, really happy, right. he would not. He wouldn't. He wouldn't want to have the energy to waste over here because he was. He would try to put the energy uh, within his. Your family over there. Right, okay. I think you're spending way too long thinking about uh, this, uh, Lavinia Grace. Uh, spend a little bit more time thinking about somebody who actually needs your concern. He's doing just fine. Don't you worry about him. Uh, let's try Hayes. Uh, hello, Steve. Hi, Nick. Thanks for um, taking my call. I just wanted to um, clarify about the letter you're referring to, Grant Schatz's letter. Oh, about the uh, ULES extension, yeah. Yes. Um, what I wanted to say is that that letter was written in March 2020. May. And the, May, uh, May, that, May 2020. Sorry, sorry, May 2020. And at that time, the ULES was aligned with the congestion charge in in, in a London. Mm. And the ref reference where he's saying about you will expand the zone mm -hmm. is referring to the expansion of the zone to the north and south circular roads in 2021. It was not referring to the expansion from the ex from the north and south circular to the outer London boroughs. Well, it doesn't make no. Never mind. Are the Conservative Party now professing support for the ULES charge or not? They support the ULES charge. No, they aren't. Not extend no, 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 not they aren't. No, they aren't. No, they aren't. No, they aren't. They support the ULES charge no, for they the. Don't. Up to the north and south circular, but not to the Greater London Council. It said Greater London Boroughs. Well, so they're for clean air for some people, but not for others. That doesn't make any sense at all, and you know it. No, well, if you followed that logically, you'd extend the ULEs to the whole of the country. Yes, I would. Well, that wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. No, that would make sense, because why should some people not have the ability to breathe clean air and others should? So you're advocating that you extend the charge for driving your car to £12.50 every single day? No. Only, those, the, only, only the tiny minority of cars that wouldn't, um, that wouldn't get a pass. No, I accept that. So any cars that don't conform to ULEZ standards mm -hmm. of yeah. 0.08... Um, Whatever it is, I mean, you, you're like you can have a 10 or 12 year old petrol car, and how many people in this country have got a car older than that? Hardly anybody at all. Me, it's well, just lots me. Of people in the outer region. Hardly anyone country. at all. Yes, I would. I, I, I value clean air. That you don't, uh, Steve, is alarming. Well, I do value clean air. Well, there you go. How are you going to get clean air without stopping pollution? I'm not not by extending it to the whole of the UK. So you you want pollution and you want clean air. That's not that's not a logical thing. To of say. course it is. It's completely logical. No, it isn't. Well, it's, I'll, it's, argue no, it's, against it then. If if in the whole of the country, the northern in in the Highlands and the Exmoor and Dartmoor, and yeah. there isn't any nitrous oxide, because all the ULEZ does is control nitrous oxide. If there is none of that around in those areas, or it's infinitesimally small, mm. why, do, why would you advocate extending the requirements for that to the whole of the UK? It's not logical. It, it's completely logical. It used to be infinitesimally small before cars were invented. Everywhere. If, if you're advocating that you extend it to the whole of the UK, I yes, can't I really... Uh, okay, thank. Uh, that's uh, it's clear that that's what you're after. Then then, well, that is what I'm after. Yeah, clean air for everyone. Then that you're only for clean air for some people just seems weird to me. But anyway, the uh, the letter that was from 14th of May 2020 to Sadiq Khan 
from the Department of Transport, at the time headed by the Right Honourable Grant Shapps, if that is indeed how we're supposed to uh, describe him, says that uh, in order to get funding for TFL, Transport for London, after the uh, ruinous uh, Tory lockdowns uh, uh, defunded it to a catastrophic extent, extent, they said, we require the immediate, we, the government, requires the immediate reintroduction of the London congestion charge, the LEZ and the ULEZ, ultra low emission zone, and urgently bring forward proposals to widen the scope and levels of these charges. It didn't say widen the scope to a certain amount, it said to widen them. Uh, but you know, if, um, if, you're <laughs> if you really are complaining about uh, clean air, then I, I don't think there's anything else to uh, say, uh, Steve. I wish you all the best. Uh, Chiswick, Dawn. Good evening, Nick. Um, right. All these green initiatives, um, which Khan and that are trying to roll out, and, you know, our, um, what the woman was saying about the LTNs over lockdown, absolutely right. They were without consultation. And, and but did you know, Nick, but most of these Labour councils that rolled out these LTNs around London... And I'm only talking of the Labour councils. I'm one by cycling lobbyists, yeah, um, including my council. Okay, so it's very biased, very pro pro cycling, and all that. Um, yeah, and this, and and in a nutshell, the war. And let me just make up, give, give out some, just a couple of points. This war against motorists needs to end. Okay, and I really do hope Rishi and Starmer reign Khan in. Um, because we are in the middle of a cost of living crisis. Because right now, it's just but, not but appropriate. We're, we're, uh, yes, but we're also in in the middle of. I mean, if you if you, you read the newspapers and you you see that yeah. uh, Southern Europe appears to be on yeah. fire, and uh, there's droughts and floods and all of the things that people said I were know. going to be the yeah. consequence of climate change. We're in a we're, the the consequences of climate change are going to be significantly more than the cost of living crisis. Um, Nick, this 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 got this has just got to be delayed. I'm not saying it's not got to happen, right. but I've done that. But but with the ULIS though, okay, the outer London one doesn't need to be. Uh, I do not agree with that because people have already mentioned outer London. It's more. It's a lot more greener spaces. You know, there's more pollution in the underground stations than there is on the out on well, the outside. Uh, yes, all, all of these are um, uh, a re, uh, a good points, but it's. They're not a, p a good point to delay or postpone action to try to clean air now. Just because the air in the underground is bad doesn't mean to say that the air overground should also be bad. Uh, Paisley, Alistair. Hello, I found something to um, space up your show. Yes. Uh, the Guinness Book of Records. Yeah. Hear me? The Guinness Book of Hello? Records, yes. Yeah, um, most of it's nonsense, but um, there's some very good, good ones. I think I'll read that to you. I've written down 90. Uh, the longest birds in the world. Uh, wait a minute, wait, 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 Alistair. Are you, are you a, did you just, just say that you've written down 90 records from the Guinness Book of well, World Records? Well, I took me about a year. <laughs> and, and, you're going, and you're going to read them? And you're going to read them for me now? No, no, not the whole lot. Just maybe three. Maybe oh, three or three. four. Okay, three. Okay. Um, the longest birds in the world. Um, you know what that is? The longest bird... Bridge, bridge in the world. Bridge. Um, I don't know. Uh, leave that with me, Alistair, and I'll have a full report on your desk first thing in the morning. Two in a row on the Nicky Abbott Show. Erith, hello, Steve. Hello, Nick. Steve. Um, you've pretty much said what I was... Um, oh, well, I'll it's been nice talking to you. Thanks a lot, Steve. Oh, three, four, no, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> there was a lady from the NHS and, and a caller... I think it was the last caller or the one before said yes. who it was. That the lady from the NHS, quite mm -hmm. important. But she was being interviewed and every time the interview <clears throat> mentioned money, yeah. she really struggled to hold her laughing. You know, who, she um Who did? The the lady from the NHS and she was talking about um using private uh, money's coming into the NHS and, and they're going to put it towards private to help out the situation that's going on at the moment. Yeah, to help out the but, private health companies, yeah. Basically. But she kept, she, she was really struggling not to laugh every time he mentioned about 
anything to do with money, like the money that went missing, mm. or, or, you know, so I, I was just thinking, if you want to know where the money's gone, I think I think she may know, the way... Right, Who, whoever she is, and whoever he is, because I, I, I actually have that no idea what... It, the CEO. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. The CEO, oh no. Oh no. The CEO, no, yeah. The CEO of something or other was um, highly amused at the idea of uh, money. She's something to do with where the money goes, <laughs> comes into the NHS. Well, that sounds conclusive to me, Steve. I'm sorry. No, if, uh, uh, that's okay. You, uh, you confused me. Well, I think you were confused when you arrived here. Nothing to do with me, Steve. Don't bring me into it. But thanks a lot, mate. As soon as you uh, find out anything further, then I want you to let me know straight away. All right. Uh, let's have a call in Horton Regis. Craig. Oh, no. Craig. Yeah, oh, sorry. I sound very puff from Art Regis. I'm from Luton originally. Oh, yes. How are you doing? Uh, fine, thanks. Yeah. Oh, it's nice to be on. I mean, I don't know why, but this time the missus is um, passed out on the sofa. Oh, yeah. Um, Any for, reason uh, many, for that? Booze. Mm -hmm. Oh, many, 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 yeah. No, we did a pot. No, she's not even eating dinner. What are we on about? Oh, bloody hell. Anyway, off the subject. What subject are we talking about? I'll, uh, I'll get back to you, Craig. This is our future. It really is. I mean, it's just extraordinary what is happening in this country. Over 50s looking for work should consider delivering takeaways, the Work and Pensions Secretary said. What? Yeah, the actual Work and Pensions Secretary, Mel Stride, blurted out during a visit to the London headquarters of the food delivery firm Deliveroo. Deliveroo, noted for its high wages and excellent benefits and proven career paths for its drivers. <laughs> During the visit to Deliveroo, the actual Work and Pension Secretary, Mel Stride, said these flexible jobs offered great opportunities and that it was good for people to consider options they might otherwise not have thought of. <laughs> There's nothing funny about it. I mean, the reason why somebody of retirement age or someone in their 50s might not have considered being a scooter delivery jockey is because they never in their lives thought that they would have to live under a regime that ruined their life choices to the extent that they would be desperate enough at that age to even think about doing something that used to be done by teenagers and 20-somethings from Eastern Europe before we screamed at them to get out of our country for five years, and they did. I mean, previous to this dismal administration, and the dismal one before. Absolutely. And the even more dismal one before that. <laughs> nobody uh, 50 and up thought they'd have to supplement their income by getting a rubbish second th and third job just to be able to afford food. And that is some nerve there, that work and pensions secretary, Mel Stride, telling the desperate and the left behind that they should embrace some low-pay, going-nowhere job of delivering warm food to people that can't be bothered to cook, but would prefer someone to bring them a pizza while they watch Jamie Oliver's new TV show, Two Minutes Simple Meals for Morons. And what experience does Work and Pension Secretary Mel Stride have of doing these jobs that makes him speak of them so highly? Well, none, as you ask. He studied PPE, he's another one of those. Philosophy, politics and economics at Oxford. One of those people. Oh, fabulous. But you know, he talks like an expert. Actually, he talks like an advert for Deliveroo. He said, what we're seeing here is the ability to log on and off and any time you like, no requirement to have to do a certain number of hours over a certain period of time, which is driving huge opportunities. Oh. <laughs> Huge opportunities. Can these people hear themselves? Stride said, you really do need to sensibly stop, take where you are in life and assess whether, for example, you've got enough money to get you through with the kind of lifestyle and living standards that you're expecting. And the answer to that is no. Yes. No. Unless you're rich or living in a better run country a country that is run for the benefit of the people rather than a country like this one that is run for the benefit of the people that are running the country. We have among the lowest state pensions in Europe, the worst 
healthcare, the worst, community care. Pretty much all of the things that you thought you were paying for with a lifetime of taxation so that the state could do the right thing by you are now not things you can rely on. Hence, the actual Secretary of State is telling you that you must compete with a 20-year-old from India for a low-paid, going-nowhere job as a delivery boy in your 50s. I mean, why not tell pensioners to go door-to-door -door asking people if they want their car washed or their lawn mowed? Why not tell, tell them to bake biscuits and try to sell them by the roadside? Or maybe pensioners could start a new career begging for change in a railway station. It's flexible. You can set your own hours. Be your own boss. The sky's the limit. <laughs> I, I love this bit. Asked whether he would consider retiring early. Mel Stride, 61, said, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing at the moment. He added, of course, as we know in politics, nothing is certain. So who knows where I'll be in many years' time? Well... I sincerely hope you are delivering me a pizza on a moped and I will absolutely, definitely and certainly not be giving you a tip. And you can bank on that, Mel Stride. Lancaster, Jonathan. Yeah, hi there. Hello uh, there. Yeah, um, yeah, I, uh, I got a little mini, a little mini convertible. Uh, I am so sorry to hear that. About six months ago, no, 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 I... Absolutely brilliant. You press a button, mm. yeah, the roof goes down, it turns into a Oh, a car! Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, the, the, the reason I've called up, yeah, is because a, a friend of mine was telling me something the other day. He he, he, he said he was watching uh, on TV a uh, an AA spokesman mm -hmm. who was being, in, being interviewed. Alcoholics and, Anonymous, yeah. Yeah, and he said he said there's something he said there's something that the people don't know about these electric cars. Yeah, he said uh, they only last for ten years. And don't don't yeah. drink don't drink the battery acid. Yeah, apparently right. They only last for ten years, and then they got to scrap them. You can't change the battery because the battery is the car. And um, I, thought, I wow, don't. I thought that I'm not sure that's actually true. Well, well, they're about 60, 70 grand, but that's what I've heard. That's what this guy is saying. He said the government won't be telling people that. Right. It only lasts about 10 years. Well, so. my, my advice is not to get your advice on cars from Alcoholics Anonymous. But, uh, you know, whatever you decide, Jonathan. Thanks a lot, mate. Let's talk about this with Richard Town. Richard is editor of the Greater London Transport Newsletter, which campaigns for the removal of the ultra-low emission zone and low-traffic neighbourhoods. Hello, Richard. Yes, Hello. Um, so, it seems an, uh, an odd thing to concentrate on the removal of. What, why um, are you so adamant that they should go? Well, low-traffic neighbourhoods um, have uh, unfortunately been swamped by um, unnecessary and uh, unworkable schemes uh, which have uh, given a preference to um, certain uh, wards uh, in London and Indeed, throughout the UK, um, they were started by um, the uh, Transport Secretary during the COVID time, so, uh, so um, that uh, congestion points could be um, ironed out with uh, better road improvements. Was that Grant Shapps at the time? That's correct, yes. And uh, by that, uh, but unfortunately, the, uh, the, the 250 million nationally uh, was uh, handed out to um, uh, county councils, city councils, and to the uh, mayor in London here, uh, Sadiq Khan, who then doled it out to his favourite um, uh, Labour uh, uh, local authorities and councils, who Im immediately used it to shut down roads and produce um, uh, protected neighbourhoods uh, for their own friends. <laughs> well, that's an interesting and uh, somewhat biased way of putting it. Um, another way of putting it is that um, Grant Shapps, the Conservative uh, Minister for Transport at the time, um, made it a precondition of funding for Transport for London that the Mayor, Sadiq Khan, reintroduce ULES after COVID and uh, indeed expand its uh, scope. Otherwise, the uh, Transport for London was going to go bust. So the idea that it's a, a Labour idea and a Labour policy is 
um, I think by your own admission, uh, completely untrue. It is, in fact, a, a conservative policy and um, a conservative priority. Yes. Well, the low traffic neighbourhoods was separate to um, a separate to um, uh, ULES, but uh, nevertheless, the good schemes that were I- in the low traffic neighbourhood uh, program, uh, particularly those uh, that uh, we got uh, listed um, in. Uh, in the newsletter uh, last uh, last year were unfortunately hidden and uh, lost in these uh, other schemes which residents rejected regarding the ULES, um uh, the unfortunate thing about it is that whilst there is a national government program uh, Backed by a statutory instrument and the Environment Act, which took effect um, in November last year, uh, to continually reduce uh, the amount of pollutants in the air. Bear in mind that less than half of the pollutants in the air are generated by motorists. And yet motorists are taking all the flack and having to take all the blame and pay all the costs uh, for reducing um, uh, air pollution. Only half, less than half of which um, is down to them. Well, uh even if it is less than half, that still represents a significant amount and the reduction even by a small amount has proven to have uh, enormous health benefits. So, so and, and it can't possibly be true that motorists in general are being penalised because it's only a very, very small number of motorists' cars that would fall foul of these regulations. Indeed, um, one in t- one in ten was the figure given by uh, Mayor Khan, but. Um, uh, uh after um, analysis, not by uh, the Tories um, and uh, not by uh, campaigners, but uh, by the Liberal, D- Liberal Democrats on the Greater London Authority, it uh, came out as one in six. Um, it is turning out to be that um, the London transport uh, deficit every year is 206 million. Um, the generation in the first year of outer London, ULES, is expected to be 200 million. Now, uh, that is a coincidence, isn't it? Well, it's, if it is, it's a, it's a happy coincidence because the amount of money that is taken from ULES goes straight into providing better public transport, which seems like a good thing, no? It's a good thing if there was going to be better public transport in outer London, but there is no plans to be uh, to have uh, increases in outer London uh, public uh, transport. Um, but the, but, but what about the, the what about this uh, circular route that uh, Mayor Khan has uh, talked about? That surely would constitute precisely that better transport for the outer rim of London. Uh, the circular route is a uh, collection of existing bus routes plus one or two extensions to the existing bus routes it is not a new route and although it's being talked about and the final plans have not yet been laid um, it it has already been admitted that it is uh, not a um, new route whatsoever Um, there there have been some improvements and I'm not going to be mealy mouthed about it Um, the new trolleybus service is running out of uh, South East London London in uh, Bromley, um, uh, Bromley Borough um, in Orpington, um, they're running on trolley buses, mm. uh, chargeable trolley buses, which go in um, uh, at the end of their shift uh, to get charged up again. So there is moves afoot, and uh, there are um, at- attempts being made by Transport for London. But if you go on the Imperial College's website, you can uh, lo- log in, uh, you can uh, check by entering your postcode to see how much much uh, air pollution you're not actually getting. Um, I did it just before this broadcast, and my area, Blackheath in South East London, uh, comes up green. Uh, well, that's very fortunate. Um, at the beginning of this conversation, you um, implied that there were some low traffic neighbourhoods that you approved of. What, what's the difference between those and the ones that you do not? Oh, uh, well... well <laughs> Uh, it's not for me to approve. Um, I just report on uh, a Greater London uh, Transport Newsletter. But were I a councillor once again, I used to be on the old Greater London Council, um, were I a councillor again, um, I would want to know what the effect of the low traffic neighbourhood would be um, 
in terms of um, uh, air pollution in the affected area. My local one, the nearest one, which um, uh, Rosamond uh, Kisser Deborah, who unfortunately lost her daughter to, to due to severe asthma, uh, she was um, uh, housed by Lewisham Council uh, just 25 yards away from the South Circular Road, uh, near to a low traffic neighbour called Lee Green. And uh, that one um, has had disastrous consequences. Not only are snatch thieves operating in the area, walk along a pleasant uh, road in the uh, area, um, operating your uh, iPhone, and a scooter will come up behind you and well, snatch that, your that, iPhone. That really has nothing to do with what we're talking about, though, does it? Oh, yes, because the police can't get into the low traffic neighbourhood because of the bollards. Right. Um, and neither can the ambulance. The ambulance well, as, as the police, are delayed. Well, as the police are only solving 3% of rapes, I, th I think that somebody's phone being uh, snatched out of their hand is uh, somewhat low down on their priorities. But, but I, I fear that we're getting sidetracked. At the beginning of our conversation, you did imply that there were, if, if not approved of, if, if you don't like that phrase, then you thought were um, less disadvantageous than others. I, I wondered... What is the nature of the low traffic neighbourhood schemes that would fit that bill? If they result in a reduction in air pollution, but don't result in an increase in air pollution outside of the area, then uh, uh, they should be um, uh, considered... Uh, as an advantage. And a few of them, um, in Wandsworth, for example, uh, there has been um, two, I think, and uh, that was uh, one of which was when the council was um, Tory controlled, um, uh, and uh, there has been no problem there. Try travelling up the A3 and going through Wandsworth High Street, and it is a bad pollution area. It is a hotspot pollution area, mm. and these hotspots have got to be addressed, no matter which party is in power. Well, I, I, li I lived in Wandsworth for ten years, and it was before anybody had even thought of the phrase low-traffic neighbourhood. It was always a congestion zone, so I find it hard to believe that it's made it worse, because it would be a permanent car park there. Uh, no, um, uh, the Wandsworth schemes, um, the two Wandsworth schemes which are now um, are working um, are an advantage to the residents. They have um, had an effect of pushing um, some of the residential uh, bound traffic onto the main roads and people who don't know the low traffic scheme entrance and exits uh, are driving around trying to find those entrance and exits without getting a fine. But apart from that, uh, those two schemes um, are working well but unfortunately the few that do work well are, are subject are, are, are submerged in the dross that um, seems to be um, Labour Council's war on the motorist yeah that phrase um, seems to be a, a part of the government's plan to try to win the next general election by making it seem as though those who are not in favour of pollution are somehow woke or uh, starting a war with those in cars but those in cars which is uh, uh, certainly in london a minority of the population i think um, something of uh, the order of uh, 13 percent of londoners actually drive five or more times a week which means that most traffic is caused by a small number of people who drive a lot uh, th uh, but when they get out of their cars, they are pedestrians. And even in their cars, they breathe air. So it seems as though, um, forgive me, but you and the Tory government are both uh, prioritising a small number of very vocal people with a grievance, as opposed to the 100% of us who would quite like to breathe fresh air. Um, my newsletter doesn't speak on behalf of the Tories. Um, our previous addition to the current one uh, had uh, splashed uh, the Liberal Democrats' position all over the front, uh, all over the front. Uh, front well, I, the I front just, page. I just said that because uh, several times in our conversation so far, you seem to be putting the blame for the for what you don't like about these uh, schemes at the foot of the Labour Party. 
what I don't like is uh, what should be uh, should be corrected. Uh, the government's uh, uh, recent position, and we haven't covered it yet, uh, and we will do so when there's more uh, flesh on the statements from uh, the Prime Minister, um, uh, is uh, that uh, these low traffic neighbourhoods should be examined, particularly if the consultations have by the residents um, have uh, rejected them. And if the consultations by the residents have rejected them, they shouldn't be put in place. Both Lee Green and the Dulwich one at Southwark um, uh, have been put in place irrespective of the rejection uh, uh, of the residents of that area. Yes, but the residents of the, that area are um, a, a small proportion of the entire number of people that will be benefited by the cleaner air that is produced by these schemes, surely. Um, the uh, low traffic neighbourhoods only shift the uh, b uh, pollution uh, away from the area which is protected. Well, I'm, uh, I'm not sure that's true. I mean, you, you cited Imperial College and yeah. their study suggests that that is not the case, that uh, concentrations of nitrogen dioxide, they were looking at uh, some areas in the north of London, uh, these schemes, the low traffic neighbourhood schemes there, uh, nitrogen dioxide fell by 5.7% within the low traffic neighbourhood and 9% on the boundaries of the low traffic neighbourhood and they also noticed that traffic dropped by over a half inside the LTNs and by 13% at the boundaries. So that, that finding is actually the opposite of what you're claiming. Um, it's the boundaries that you're talking about and uh, the idea that suddenly traffic dis disappears simply because it can't get into a low traffic neighbourhood um, is not um, uh, borne out by the facts. But nevertheless... But, but I've, um, just, I've just told you what the facts are. And it, and it has borne that out. Surely, surely the point of these things is not to punish those smaller number of people that drive a lot. It is to encourage more people to walk or cycle or use public transport for the benefit of everyone. Nothing wrong with that, but there again we come back to the basis. And the basis is it's the people that decide, not, um, uh, not, uh, uh, not those who, um, uh, do, uh, who, who believe that they're acting um, on behalf of the people. Well, that, um, that's that's sure. Well, but that, that's why we have MPs, because the people can't be allowed to decide everything for themselves. We, we the people, sim simply don't have uh, the facts or the inter intellectual capacity to do it. And so we um, give that power to th those that we hope are uh, more um, uh, readily equipped than we are. Well, um, let's uh, let's take, uh, for example, one of the most recent surveys that the uh, that uh, Transport for London did um, uh, on ULES and the effect of it in outer London. And if the effect of it in outer London was that um, they resulted that there would be a negligible effect, a neg there would be an effect, and, a, and nobody's demanding that there has not been an effect. The best effect uh, has been the original. Eight, eight square mile um, uh, central London um, uh, ULES uh, 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 area but nevertheless um, nobody's saying that there's no effect but there is an effect and secondly if you are um, so if you are suffering from a major um, respiratory disease, then the latest indications are that you shouldn't be living in a metro metropolitan metropolis at all. Well, Any major city well, at all. That, that would be um, good advice. Go live on uh, a mountain. But that is not a choice that's available to all, uh, sadly. Richard, very good of you uh, to give us your time. Thanks for that. Richard Town, editor of the Greater London Transport Newsletter which campaigns for the removal of ultra-low emission zones and low-traffic neighbourhoods.